Hello YouTube, my name is Patricia and this is my very first YouTube video ever um, and I just wanted to um, give my testimony and give my faith in Jesus Christ, uh, my Lord and Savior. Um, in 2007 or 2008, I'm not, I can't exactly recall, but it was before President Obama was elected, so it was probably 2007, um, I had this feeling of impending doom just a real overwhelming feeling of impending doom and I didn't understand why I had it. Around this time my youngest sister who's five years younger than me um, had um, been experiencing issues with her kidneys. Um, Ten years prior to that she had had a kidney transplant and her kidneys were starting to go bad again and um, her health was starting to fail and so I, I just sort of associated um, the feeling of impending doom with the possibilities that I was just worried about um, her dying and so um, I started questioning you know uh, what happens when you die um, is there life after death and I, I just started really thinking about this because at the time back then I was watching things like Ghosts um, Among Us or you know those paranormal shows I was watching a lot of that, and um, I, I believed in the supernatural. It wasn't really hard for me to believe. I, I knew of Jesus. I believed in Jesus. Um, I called myself a Christian. I thought I was a Christian um, because compared to other people, I thought I was a good person, and I thought that was enough. Um, and so basically what happened was, um, you know, I, I started to look on the Internet, I know, all places, right? But that's where we kind of all go um, when we want to look for an answer, right? And so, um, you know, I started to see all these things about, like, aliens. And so I started questioning, you know, how do aliens, if we are all created in the image of God, how do aliens really play into all of this? I wasn't really quite sure. And so... You know how amazing God is, right? He He says that when um, you start to seek him, you will find him. So I was seeking him, and he was drawing me closer to himself without me even realizing it because he knows how to reach us. He knows how to get to us, right? And so basically, um, as I was flipping the channels that night, you know, um, and, and just pondering all these things, I came upon... Um, an infomercial of this psychic guy of all things promoting his book ghosts among us and I thought wow who better to know about the afterlife than someone who talks to the dead and so um, I immediately ordered the book and as soon as I got it I mean I, I couldn't put it down I had to finish reading it I read it it made perfect sense you know um, and, of course, I had never really read the Bible or anything like that, so I, I didn't really know at the time that this was not something that, you know, the Lord was okay with. Um, but anyway, I read the book, and I thought, wow, this makes really good sense. It's just what I believe, that all good people go to heaven, and bad people go to hell. And I'm a good person, so I'm okay. And so I called my sister, my youngest sister. She's five years younger than me. And she's the one that was going to have the kidney, you know, transplant or, uh, you know, she was having the problems. And so I called her up and I said, oh, I just read the most amazing book. You don't have to worry. Um, you don't need to be afraid, this and that and the other. Um, you need to read it. And so I started telling her about the book. And she said, you know, that's great, Tricia. Now, keep in mind, my youngest sister is five years younger than I am. And she said, that's great, but I am I need to work out my own salvation with God. I need to make sure that I'm going to go into heaven. And she says, I'm reading more Christian books. And I said, okay, well, you know, what are you reading? And so she read it off a couple of books, none of which really got my attention, except one the very last one that she had mentioned. And a friend of her had given her a book, um, 23 Minutes in Hell. And she started telling me about the book, about this Christian man that had been Christian for a very long time, very um, active in the church. 
and he had an experience where he went to sleep and then his soul descended into hell and the Lord allowed him to experience what hell is like for an unsaved soul and she just you know went on to describe the demons and things like that and I was intrigued that got my attention because I had been watching things like that, you know, with the whole supernatural and all that. So thinking, at first I had two two reactions. I said, what kind of friend would give you a book like that? You're a good person. You don't need to be worrying about going there. And she said, Trisha, you really, you should consider reading. And I said, well, I think I will. Because I'm, you know, it, you know I'm thinking, I'm a good person. It's not going to affect me. I'll read it. So I did. I immediately got the book. And I began to read it. And as I began to read it, he started using scripture. And I grabbed my Bible, I dusted it off, and I would open my Bible. And I would look for that scripture. And I would read what was above it and below that scripture. And I just sort of started questioning even more things. And the things that he described in the book, um, you know, started to kind of stir things up in me and I realized that there was a lot more going on you know he had mentioned in his book that you know it's not good enough to just be a good person it's not good enough to just call yourself a Christian and I started to sort of question then how how do you not end up there in hell and at the time I didn't realize that you know I was headed there uh, I'm still in the mindset of um, this is not going to happen to me. I'm not. I'm not going there. And then, um, as I was finishing the book, he had mentioned someone else that had experienced the same thing. Uh, Mary Kay Baxter. She, he didn't mention her by name, but you know, towards the end of the book, I was able to look it up. Um, anyway, so I saw um, that her book was Divine Revelations of Hell, and immediately bought it. And started reading it. So through all of this, hindsight is always twenty twenty, And I can see that God was just, through all of this, drawing me closer and closer to himself. Because he loves me. And when I began to read Mary Kay Baxter's Divine Revelation of Hell, she is pleading with the reader. You know, beloved, you know, these things are faithful and true. And she gave scripture for all all of the things that the Lord had revealed to her in hell, in the pits. And what was so unique about this book was that the Lord revealed to her, okay, why the people were in the pits, what got them there to begin with. I was in sheer shock when I found out that there are other people like myself. I started to see myself in one of those pits. There are people there that call themselves Christians, that they knew of Jesus but didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I didn't read the Bible. I didn't go to church except on Thanksgiving and holidays, Christmas, and, and, and you know, for um, Passover. And, um, you know, I, I was a, you know, I was of the world. You know, I, I went out to clubs. I hung out with my girlfriends. We, we you know, we'd do all these things. And, I mean, just very worldly you know, and I, um, and, uh, when I started to see myself in the pits, as she's, you know, all the time just begging the reader, you know, reader, this is real. The Lord showed this to me. Reader, I don't want you to go there. She would call us a beloved. And, um, and something began to stir in me after I, you know, had the vision of myself being in the pits. Because how, now I'm thinking, I don't know how. To go to heaven. I don't know how to end up in heaven. And so basically I began to weep. I began to weep from the pits of my my soul, my stomach. I just began to weep and weep and weep. And I cried out to God and I said, Oh God, God, I don't know how to be saved. Save me. Come into my heart. Lord Jesus. I don't want to end up in the pits of hell. And I began to just weep and weep and weep. And at that moment, I felt this like warmth come over me, like oil, just just 
this warmth that came over from my head all the way down to my toes. And I felt this peace. And my heart was racing. And I was weeping, just weeping bitterly over my sins. I, I felt ashamed. I felt exposed before God. And as this warmth is all-consuming, I, I, I hear something in my spirit. Not like an audible, I don't know how to explain it exactly, but I heard something that says, You are a new creation. Sin no more. And I, oh, I just cried even more. I was like, how do I not sin? How do I not sin? My nature is sinful. Oh, dear God, save me. And I will try and be faithful. You know, I will try not to sin anymore. I will follow you all the days of my life. Dear God, save me. You know? And then something else was like, the bridegroom is coming. Now, keep in mind, I hadn't been reading the Bible. I and I had no idea what the bridegroom was. Um, and so when I heard that, I, w I was a little confused. I was just very emotional. I was crying. Um, and I, I became born again. You know, how, have you ever watched that movie, The Grinch Stole Christmas? You know, at the very end when his heart gets two sizes too big? Well, that's what my heart felt like. My heart, I asked Jesus into my heart. And it felt like my heart had gotten two sizes too big because it had hurt for like it had hurt for like a week or so you know and I knew I was baptized with the Holy Spirit because you know the day before in my car I was jamming to that Katy Perry song you know I kissed a girl and I liked it and I was just jamming to it and then um, the next day as I had gotten into my car I heard that same song and it just offended my spirit altogether I had to turn it off. I couldn't listen to secular music anymore. I, I hungered. I mean, I just couldn't get enough of the Bible, Christian music. Um, I, I, I had not been attending a church, so I didn't know where to go. I had gone to, um, I had taken my kids and I put packed them up in the car. You know, I had all these brand new feelings. You know, everybody in my family thought I was crazy. I'd just, like, gone nuts or something. And I'm like, Jesus is coming soon. Jesus said he's coming soon. The bridegroom is coming. You know, and um, I said, you got to get ready. And I was telling everybody I knew about heaven and about hell and how it's a real place and how we don't want to, you know, we you don't want to go there and how narrow is the way um, to salvation through Jesus Christ alone. And so I began to develop um, a relationship with the Lord. And um, I lost a lot of friends or people that I thought were my friends. A lot of people thought I was weird. Um, and, uh, but I won't give up Jesus. I won't give up Jesus. I can lose everybody. I'm not giving up my Jesus. Jesus is the only way. He is the truth and a life. And without him, there is no life. There is none other. There is but God and his son, Jesus Christ. And um, I am thankful that he has changed my life. To God be the glory. He is coming soon. And he's coming for a pure and holy righteous bride. And with all the things that are happening right now, we need to be on our knees and in prayer, especially for our loved ones who are not saved. And we need to just not be afraid to tell others about Jesus. He is alive. We should not be afraid. Anyway, I pray that you're encouraged and... This is my first video. Um, anyway, God bless. And thank you for listening.